Assembling the flute properly can improve your playing without even needing to practice. First, start with the body and hold on to it at the receiver or barrel. Be very careful to never grab your flute by the keys. In the other hand, take the head joint and hold to, onto that on the tube. Never grab onto the lip plate. When you bring the two pieces together, use a twisting motion, not a rocking motion. A rocking motion can damage the end of the head joint. Twist them together, but don't push the flute all the way in. Leave it pulled out about an eighth of an inch to start with. Flutes are not meant to be played all the way pushed in. Line up the flute so that the outer edge of the blowhole is in line with the outer edge of the first key. And again, this is just a starting point. You may want to adjust it in another direction later, but that's a good place to start. With the foot joint, it's the same thing. Hang on to the flute at the receiver or barrel. Don't hang on at the head joint because if it's loose, the whole flute can drop. So just at the barrel, not on the keys. Then, on the other hand, take the foot joint. This one's a little, this is a little trickier, right? Because it's small. So I like to put one finger on the D-sharp key, just gently pressing, and my thumb on the other side of the tube, and I'm careful not to squeeze the mechanism at all. And then once again, we bring them together with a twisting motion, not a rocking motion. To so rotate the flute. Usually, as you get towards the end, it gets a little more difficult. So then switch to the end, and continue to rotate the two until they're together. And line the flute up so that this long steel here is in line with the center of the last key. Now that your flute is properly assembled, it's time to add your hands. Starting with the right hand, tap your index finger onto your thumb. Wherever your finger naturally contacts your thumb is the part of your thumb that needs to contact the flute. Just put it under the first key, the F key, and then add your fingers. If that feels comfortable, if your fingers don't feel cramped or too spread out, then that's the right position for you. If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can adjust the position by moving your thumb. If you slide your thumb a little to the left, it helps to open your hands so that your fingers are more spread out over the keys. And if you move your thumb to the right, brings your fingers together more. So everyone's hands are different. You just find the spot for you where your hand feels the most natural. Then in the left hand, we balance the flute on the middle joint of the left index finger. And this is the part that's a little bit tricky. So I do it this way. I put the middle joint, that line right in the middle of my finger, with my finger to the side on the tube right between the first two keys. You can see my hand is going straight up and down and my palm is facing down the tube of the flute. Now I'm going to slowly rotate my hand as I reach for the keys. And when I find the spot where all my fingers fit the keys comfortably, that's where my hand goes. Coincidentally, my thumb is also a little bit on its side, the same way that it is in the right hand. If you flatten out your thumb, it pulls your fingers away from the keys. So your thumb needs to be on its side and the same is true for most people in the left hand as well. You can have your thumb bent or straight, whichever is more comfortable for you. But there's a nice relaxed hand position. My fingers are centered over the keys. Even if you're not playing an open hole flute, you should try to have your fingers in the center. It closes the pads better so that they seal, which improves your tone. And it's also good training for when you do get an open hole flute. That's what the little circles on the top of the keys are for, to help guide you to be centered. Make sure that your fingers are relaxed and in a nice, gentle C. We don't play with the tips. We play with this part right here, because that's the fleshiest part. It's gonna give you the best, the best coverage on an open hole and also the best leverage on a closed hole or an open hole. So just like this. Move your fingers from the knuckle. It's kind of this sort of a motion. It's never anything like this. Just use the muscles in your hand. 
our wrists need to be slightly bent because that provides vertical support for the instrument. If your wrists aren't bent, two things happen. First of all, your left hand slides way too high and then the flute rests here at the base of your finger. There's a bunch of nerve endings there and it can be very, very painful. But the other thing is, if your wrists are straight, nothing is holding up the flute except you squeezing it. And as soon as you start to move your fingers, that's gonna be problematic. So, a little bit of a bend, middle joint, playing position. Now that your flute is properly aligned and your hands are comfortably placed on the keys, it's time for playing position. We play the flute with it angled down and slightly in front of us. We find the best place where we don't feel any pain or stress on our back or arms or shoulders. And a good way to do that is like this. So bring the flute up, bring it way back here, and you can feel your arm and your back tensing. Then rotate around, keep going, and you'll feel more tension over here. Then come back to where there's no pain or tension, and that's your playing position. Sometimes it's helpful to turn your head to the left or your torso a little bit to the left to find that spot where everything feels really comfortable. And if you do that, be sure that you turn your chair or your body a little bit to the right so that when you're in playing position, you're still looking straight ahead at the music stand or the director. If you're playing in a marching band, your position is going to be a little bit different. It's gonna be more straight out to the side with the end of the flute up. That's fine for marching band, but you shouldn't do it for anything else. It's not a great position for flute playing. Professional flute players don't play this way because it can be very tiring and can also impair your technique. We tune the flute by either pulling out the head joint or pushing in the head joint. When we pull out the head joint, it makes the tube of the flute longer, so that makes the pitch lower. When we push in the head joint, that makes the tube of the flute shorter and that makes the pitch higher. Flutes are not designed to be played with the head joint all the way pushed in. So start out with it pulled out at about an eighth of an inch and then check, check your note with a tuner. If it's still sharp, pull out. If it's flat, your flute might be cold or it could be that the head joint cork is leaking, but you shouldn't have to play your flute with the head joint all the way pushed in. Another possibility is if it's flat, you might be turned in too far. Speaking of that, often students are given the direction to tune their flutes by either rolling in or rolling out. This is not the correct way to tune a flute. We pull out the head joint or we turn or we push in the head joint. That said, a lot of times when people are given the direction to either roll in or roll out, the problem is really that the flute isn't lined up properly. Remember, we started with the outer edge of the embouchure hole in line with the outer edge of the first key. But that was just our starting point. If you have your flute set there, you bring it up to play and you have a nice balanced posture and your tone comes out great, then that's the right spot for you. But if not, you need to change that setup a little bit. So if you find that you tend to put your head down in order to make your best sound, that means that the head joint is turned too far away from you. So you need to turn it in a little bit. Not just rotate the flute in, adjust the head joint so it's more turned in towards you. If you keep your, have to keep your head up higher than horizontal, or if you feel like you have to lean away from the flute in order to make your best tone, that means that the head joint is turned too far in towards you and you need to adjust it so that it's a little more turned out. Remember, you should be able to get your best sound, a sound that responds well in all the registers, with good posture that's balanced and not leaning in any weird ways.